today on Newsbeat, see which LSU Tiger is being portrayed. In the newspaper? Close, Jake. Ah. In a movie. Also, the local police seem to be getting ready for something big. Find out what later tonight. And with midterms this week, are you so stressed? See what you can do to help relieve all the pressure. All this and more, Tiger TV's Newsbeat starts now. Welcome to Tiger TV Newsbeat. I'm Jake Robles. And I'm Taylor Tyser. One of two nurses at a Dallas hospital who tested positive for Ebola flew on a commercial airline flight before she reported having symptoms. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said she did not show any symptoms at the time of the flight, and experts said that only someone with symptoms could spread the virus. The CDC asked the 132 passengers on the plane to contact the agency to be interviewed. LSU's Manship School Dean Jerry Sepos is portrayed by Hollywood actor Oliver Platt in a new movie uh, titled Kill the Messenger. In the mid-90s, Sepos was the executive editor of the San Jose Mercury News, which ran a three-part series suggesting connections between the CIA and the country's crack cocaine epidemic. Sepos decided to report the series after many critics discredited journalist Gary Webb's work. Before Kill the Messenger premiered, Sepos asked, for a copy of the movie, but was rejected. He watched the film and says it's a fictionalized piece with only a distant relation to the truth. I'm not quite sure how you produce a movie without talking to the principals, but as I say, I think Hollywood meets the CIA results in a good yarn and not necessarily a, you know, a documentary look at what really happened. The Supreme Court declined to review lower court rulings that overturned marriage bans. Reporter Desiree Robertson explains what this means for Louisiana. LSU student Michael Byer worries about what his future will look like. He's waiting to see if Louisiana will follow the trend and allow same-sex marriage. Way a lot of fear, I guess, that, um, that I would have about uh, being able to plan my life with someone. In September, a Paris judge ruled same-sex marriage was unconstitutional in Louisiana. The U.S. Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals will review the ruling. In similar cases, this has led to same-sex marriage bans being overturned. Um, will have a huge sweeping effect on the rest of the country, and it will mean that the state recognizes the dignity of these people's relationships. The end of the ban would bring marriage equality. However, it would not solve all the problems faced by members of the LGBT community. Hoping that marriage equality could maybe help change a lot of those conversations and make people uh, realize how important um, a lot of these other issues, these issues are. Byer hopes that the case ends the battle on marriage equality. If it does, he feels he and others will be able to better freely express themselves. I could stand in front of everyone that I know, um, my family, my friends, my neighbors, and say this is the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with and the state is recognizing that. For Tiger TV, Desiree Robertson. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals will decide if it wants to hear the case by early November. If the court rules same-sex is legal, about 30 states in the country will have marriage equality laws. Well, it's time to take our first break of the evening, but don't go anywhere because when we come back, reporter Kira Schutte will give us a look at what the Baton Rouge Police Department might be afraid of. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back, Tigers. Before we turn it over to weather, how about a little tasty news? Farmers in China are getting rich, but they haven't struck gold or dug up oil, just walnuts. As prices of walnuts rise in Asia, a perfect walnut can now be valued higher than gold. Walnuts were used as toys in China's imperial courts as early as 2020 AD and have been seen as a status symbol of the elite ever since. Chinese citizens also roll pairs of walnuts between the, their palm and their fingers thought to improve circulation. One Chinese walnut farmer says he harvests up to 2 million won a year. That's $325,000 just from those nuts. Speaking of nuts. Whatever you are about to say, please don't. I was just <laughs> going to say that a nut hit me on the head today. And you haven't been the same since, have you? No, but you know what I always say? When the students start getting attacked by nuts, falls right around the corner. Uh. Huh. Okay, well, let's just check in with uh, weather forecaster Christian Bennett to see what else we can expect for this week. Jake, you always tell the best stories. <clears throat> I think it's safe to say it's almost fall here in southern Louisiana. We're seeing leaves and apparently acorns falling. 
The temperatures are staying mostly in the 70s. I even got to wear my scarf today. The best part is it's looking like it's going to stay that way. Today was pretty brisk out. We saw highs at 76 degrees. Wind speeds reached up to 11 miles per hour. As the sun sets, we're going to see things cooling off a little. But Wednesday night, we're going to see temperatures drop into the 50s. We're going to see winds light and variable with wind speeds at 5 miles per hour and 58% humidity. We won't be seeing a chance of rain for the next couple of days. It's going to be clear tonight, but pretty chilly. So make sure to take a coat if you go out. I'll be back later to tell you what you can look forward to for tomorrow and for the rest of the week as well. So stick around. Now back to Jake and Taylor at the desk. Have our local police departments been gearing up for trouble? Tiger TV reporter Kira Schutte tells us how military weapons are finding their way into our town. We don't have the luxury to, to train or plan for if something happens. We have to prepare as if it would be when something happens. Police departments around Louisiana, including the LSU police, are gearing up with military equipment to protect and serve. But since the Trayvon Martin shooting and most recently the Michael Brown shooting, People are criticizing local police departments, claiming that they are becoming militarized. But PhD student and former police officer Norman Clark thinks that people are overreacting. Is it going to violate constitutional rights? Is it going to be used to uphold your constitutional rights? And that's something where that equipment is not being given out um, lightly. LSU Police Captain Corey Lalonde explains that these materials are a precautionary tool. When you have an active shooter situation, when you have situations of that nature, we have to have the tools to be able to respond. Sarah Powell doesn't mind the police having access to this equipment, but recognizes that others may have a different view. It's not like I ever have direct contact with police with military grade weaponry. So I think my opinion may not be as strong as someone in a lower class who may see police action on a daily basis. Well, our goal is always to end as peacefully as possible, but at the same time, uh, we do have to protect uh, the remainder of the public. Lalonde sends a reminder to those who are still anxious. But it is better to have that type of equipment and never have to use it than to be in a situation where you need it and not have it. This is Kira Schutte with Tiger TV. If you want to know what military equipment your police department has, you can file a Freedom of Information Act. When we come back, find out what puppies and yoga have to do with each other. Even I don't want to miss this. Stay tuned. LSU's first year experience helps students relax in the midst of midterm week with their events so stressed. This event gave students an opportunity to take a break from studying and play with puppies, enjoy desserts before class, and hear presentations from health, from health wellness, and promotions. Students were able to tweet their problems or concerns about midterms with the hashtag so stressed as FYE provided solutions to their problems. It seems like all we talk about is Netflix so much that we should have a whole Netflix segment on this show, but we won't. However, if you're interested, Netflix is bringing the TV show of all TV shows to its online streaming service. You guessed it, Friends. All 236 episodes of the beloved comedy are coming to Netflix on January 1st, 2015. Say goodbye to those reruns on random cable channels and watch whichever episode you want whenever you want. Like the one when they were on a break. Speaking of online streaming, HBO confirmed it will launch a standalone service for streaming its programs in 2015. The service will be available without a cable subscription. HBO chairman and CEO Richard Plepperler said during the Time Warner's investor meeting this morning that the streaming industry is a large and growing opportunity that should no longer be left untapped. The service is separate from HBO Go, which requires users to authenticate their account for their cable subscription. Do you ever feel like you're just full of hot air? If you ever want to rise above all that nonsense, Tiger TV's reporter Chelsea LeBlanc will show you how. Robert Ambo is a pilot. But not of planes of hot air balloons. Flying in a balloon is like floating on a cloud. I call it a magic carpet ride. Ambo is a veteran hot air balloon pilot and has been flying ever since fate stepped in 28 years ago. Me and my friend, Kari Cazzo, found out they had a big race going in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So we bought a ticket and went down there and we were so excited about the balloons going up and fired up. Next day I bought a balloon. And now? 
She's the head pilot for the Ascension Parish Balloon Festival, overseeing more than 30 balloons and their pilots from across the country. But the title isn't what Ambo likes the most. The most exciting part is to see the excitement on the people that get to fly with me for the first time. I've been doing it long enough and I still love it, but to see the excitement with them, it, it really, I like that. I've flown twice, my wife has flown three times. Uh, nothing bad ever happened, but he, he's the type of pilot that the conditions aren't right, he will not fly. Ambo says he'll continue to fly because it's what he loves to do. I've been flying 28 years and I still love every flight. I might not fly as much as I used to, but I still enjoy it because every flight is different than the one before. There's never two flights the same. And for him, that's more than enough. Chelsea LeBlanc, Tiger TV. To schedule an event, go to www.ascensionballooning.com. After the break, see what the talk of campus is, and I'll give you a hint, it's cool and windy. Don't go anywhere. All right, Taylor, so I got a really good one today. Go for it, Jake. Do you have a purse? Yes. Well, you should walk around with it open. Why? Because you never know when you can expect a change in weather. Jake Robles, ladies and gentlemen. It's good. Sorry. It's good. Let's check in with weather forecaster Christian Bennett to see if we can expect some change in weather. Jake is just on fire today. Well, we aren't expecting to see much change in weather tomorrow. We're going to see Highs at 82 degrees with lows at 57 degrees. We're going to see wind speeds at 6 miles an hour with humidity staying fairly low at 49%. Yay for mild humidity and good hair days. <laughs> the rest of the week we're working with very similar forecasts. We're going to see a lot of sunshine with temperatures staying in the mid to low 80s and lows in the 50s and 60s. We're seeing clear skies with mild humidity and wind speeds from 5 to 10 miles per hour. It's looking like some good weather for game day this weekend. Perfect for spending some time tailgating, but once again, we are seeing temperatures dropping into the 50s at night, so you may want to bundle up for this game. This has been your weekend weather. Make sure to catch Tiger TV every day for your most up-to-date forecast. When we come back, we'll find out from Cody Krupp if LSU's football team is coming back in a big way. It was an exciting weekend to be a Tiger. Not only did the LSU football team pull off a last-second dramatic victory in the Swamp, but the LSU volleyball team traveled to Knoxville Sunday and picked up their third straight conference victory. I'm joined today on the show by that coach in her 16th season. Coach Fran Forey, thanks for joining me. As I mentioned, three victories in a row. This team seems to really be hitting its stride lately. What has been the difference? You know, I think the difference is just our discipline. You know, our, our young kids have figured out the system and, and, you know, we've had the emergence of a couple of freshmen. Mimi Eugene and Regina Tillis have, have really kind of burst on the scene as of late. Uh, speaking of 16 years, you've been around some really good volleyball teams. You've seen some championship teams. Now that this team has hit its stride, really found its confidence that they can win day in and day out, what do you think the ceiling is for, for this uh, 2014 team? Well, I, this is a special team, and I said it from the beginning. And, and, you know, when we had the injury to Courtney early in the season, we had to kind of recreate ourselves. And we've just now hit our stride, as you said, and I think we're going to take off. There's a chance this team could win out. You know, this weekend is going to be tough when we're on the road, but we'll see. This will be telltale this weekend. Uh, can you just give us a quick, just as a coach, what are some of the challenges that you deal with having to go into some of these environments, Missouri, Kentucky? What, what, what is it like to go on the road? Well, first and foremost, they're loud. Those venues are loud. They have huge student populations that come out. Thousand of thousand students in the seats on at Kentucky and Missouri. Tough places to play. Rabid fans, just like our Tiger fans, and you know, great venues for volleyball. On top of that, all right, Mimi Eugene. Lately, she's just been playing out of her mind, especially as a freshman. You you know, took her a while to adjust. It seemed like, but now she's really starting to show what she's made of. Just talk about what she's meant since she's really kicked it into gear. You know, Mimi is just such a smooth, true volleyball player, and you put the, together with that some great athleticism and great training and, and understanding the system. You know, the sky's the limit for that kid. Sure. Hey, coach, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Hey, good luck this weekend. Thanks. In other games this weekend that both Florida and LSU needed to define the rest of their seasons, the Mad Hatter pulled another one out of his magic hat for his 100th career victory Saturday night in the Swamp in front of a raucous crowd. Players stepped up when they needed to most, and one of those players was freshman running back Leonard Fournette as he was named the Freshman SEC Player of the Week after rushing for 140 yards in his first career start and adding a touchdown. For the first time in his career, the depth charts list Fournette as a co-starter with Kenny Hilliard and Terrence McGee, and he is expected to be the go-to guy moving forward this weekend 
and into the rest of the grueling SEC schedule. We've, we've handed him the ball a pile uh, throughout the year, but uh, you know we wanted to see what he would be like with a starting assignment. And one thing about it, you know, sometimes even the very talented guys, you know, with that starting assignment, you know, there's some pressure there that you don't necessarily want to, you know, give a guy when you want him to grow up and think about the plays, not necessarily the fact that he's starting. But you know, after the number of carries he's had with us and you know the the experience he's had, we felt like that was a great call for him. With rivals Old Miss and Alabama looming in future weeks, a typical season would involve the process of not looking over a Kentucky Wildcats team making the trip to Death Valley Saturday night. But this isn't a normal season. Kentucky comes in at 5-1 and one with Wildcat Nation hopeful for their first bowl game since 2010. This time for the LSU mantra, they know that they cannot let, take this team to lightly. Good quarterback, um, really good passing, and he, he can run the ball. Um, you have about three three good backs on the next table who could all run the ball um, pretty well, so a really good offense. Looked at it a little bit today. Uh, they're much improved than what they were last year. Uh, they got some big physical guys up front, and uh, they do a good job of running to the ball on defense. We're heading into week seven of the 2014 college football campaign, but the SEC schedule is announced for the 2015 season. Get your hotel reservations ready because they will be traveling early. LSU will travel to Starksville to take on the now number one team in the country the second week of the season, followed by a visit from Auburn and Death Valley. A trip to Syracuse and the Carrier Dome is on the docket for the only non-conference travel, as well as a battle in Tuscaloosa later in the season. It looks again, Texas A&M and LSU will battle in a Thanksgiving Day tilt, but this time in the friendly confines of Tiger Stadium. Last week, the men's basketball team returned to the PMAC to begin preparation for their season, tipping off on November 15th when they take on Gardner-Webb. And today, they spoke to the media for their annual basketball media day with a sense of optimism that this could be the year. The same as last year, you know, we're going to go out there and play hard, you know. Uh, we're going to try to change up our style of play, getting the ball up the floor more. So, uh, hopefully get the fans what they uh, came to see. Yeah, that price is definitely more competitive this year just because there are a lot of different faces. Guys want to prove themselves. Guys want to try to, you know, get known. So I just feel practice is definitely more competitive and it's a lot better so far than it was going last year. I just let the fans know that we've been working hard and um, it's coming. The season on the way, so be there. That's all the time we have today for sports. When we come back, see one of the latest fashion trends. Yesterday, reporter Amber Smith showed you the newest trend in weight loss, weight training with corsets. But another fashion trend is also making waves. French designers have become fond of bedazzled eyelids and brows. Eyebrow cosmetic company Benefit is now launching a bling brow box. The box will cost $25 and will come with 52 self-adhesive crystals, mini tweezers, and application tips. They will also offer salon services in Benefit salons across the country with prices ranging from $5 to $20. That's very interesting. Would you like to try putting bedazzles on your eyes? Well, don't knock until you try it. Right, Jake? Well, I don't think I will be the one trying it. Well, that's all the time we have today for Newsbeat. Don't forget to watch us online at TigerTV.tv or check out our YouTube channel. You can also follow us online at Facebook, Twitter, and at LSURevely.com. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good evening.